From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Stephanie Water. Daryl Clark has the evening off. Our top story tonight, the intersection of Airport Way and University Avenue was closed for several hours this morning after a major collision involving a semi-truck. 21-year-old Cody Odeman of Fairbanks died in a blue Saturn sedan after colliding with an 18-wheeler as it was turning left onto University Avenue from Airport Way. Next of kin have been notified. The crash totaled the sedan, which was reportedly traveling well above the speed limit. Semi-driver 56-year-old Benny Easters was not hurt, nor was his passenger. The intersection was closed for several hours because the truck was leaking diesel fuel. The trailer from the semi was carrying hazardous equipment and materials, but fortunately that cargo was undamaged. Sergeant Jess Carson with the Alaska State Troopers says they think alcohol is involved. Statements about who had the green light um, at the time of the collision, and we're still investigating that at this time. The reason we believe alcohol is a factor is an odor coming from the vehicle, and we believe speed's a factor based on some eyewitness statements. Troopers say that 18-wheel semi-truck involved in the fatal collision was carrying hazardous materials, which reportedly were seven solid fuel sounding rocket motors in transport to the Poker Flat Research Range. The rocket motors are suborbital launch vehicles capable of lifting scientific payloads to areas of the upper atmosphere and into space to study scientific phenomena such as the aurora. Scientists with NASA came from the launch site at Poker Flat to inspect the motors for damage. The rockets are scheduled for a launch in January. A hazmat team was on scene to clean up the diesel fuel from the truck. Now it's undetermined what damage the rockets may have sustained in the accident. A tragic accident for the person who was killed and, and that's very sad and of course we were concerned about the driver of the truck and uh, the, they are flammable uh, rocket motors but um, they're solid fuel and so there's no risk of a spill and there's no igniters so we were mainly concerned after we found out that the, the driver was okay that there not be damage to the motors themselves because if they're cracked the solid fuels crack, then they're no good, and then um, it might mess up our, uh, our rocket launching. Alaska State Troopers are investigating an incident that occurred in Esther at about 9.40 p.m. Saturday night. A resident at a Burton Road address reported an assault. He said a neighbor pointed a gun at him and at one point fired a shot into his house. Now, no one was hurt. Patrol troopers and tactical team responded and searched the residence, but the suspect was not found. At 5.30 Sunday morning, a fire was reportedly set in the cabin troopers had searched earlier, causing extensive damage. The state fire marshal's office is working to determine the cause of the blaze. The investigation of the assault and fire continues, and anyone with information about either incident is asked to call state troopers at 451-5100. Independent Bill Walker was sworn into office as Alaska's 11th governor since statehood during a ceremony held today in Juneau. Jamie Schwartzwald has more. Together, there's not a thing we cannot accomplish as human beings. Words of unity from Clinkett Clan leader David Kantzik at Centennial Hall in Alaska's capital city. Alaska Governor Bill Walker and Lieutenant Governor Byron Malott both took their respected oaths of office just before noon today. The candidacy formed as a unity ticket following the state primary, linking the former Republican Walker and Malott, a Democrat, while introducing Alaska's new governor, Lieutenant Governor Malott, also spoke of unity. We Alaskans can be one, that we Alaskans can rise as one. Among those on stage was outgoing Governor Sean Parnell, who lost to Walker in last month's election. In his speech, Walker said his administration will reverse course on Parnell's decision not to expand Medicaid under the American Health Care Act. I told you that accepting expanded Medicaid was a high priority for me. And we will begin the wheels in motion today to begin accepting expanded Medicaid. Walker also said during his campaign that he would declare a state of emergency on the high cost of energy in the interior. During his first speech as governor, Walker admitted that the state is headed for lean times with oil hovering around $70 a barrel. We live in one of the most resource-rich states in the nation and one of the richest countries in the world. The key to every growing economy is low-cost energy. We don't have a resource problem in Alaska. We have a distribution problem. 
The governor closed his speech with the reoccurring theme of unity. We are rising as one. We are on that steep climb to our peak. It is with great honor that I lead you on that journey. Jamie Schwartzwald reporting. Okay, when we come back, we're looking at a winter storm moving into the area. Mike Schultz will have all those details. And the sound of bells are being heard throughout the area as the Salvation Army is into full swing with their red kettles collecting donations. Those stories are next. Stay with us. Hey, everyone. Welcome back in to Fairbanks Evening News. Mike Schultz with you once again talking about weather. And I got this here for a reason because the alert went out yesterday and today it became official. We are under a winter storm warning for the middle of Tanaw Valley, including the Fairbanks area. Here's more from the National Weather Service. The approaching storm could be seen moving in from the southwest all day. And according to the National Weather Service, heavy snow will begin to fall tonight. The snow will begin on Monday evening and it'll continue all day Tuesday and Tuesday night. We think that the heaviest snowfalls will occur from the early afternoon Tuesday through the wee hours of the morning on Wednesday. And that will be when the bulk of the snow falls. And then late Wednesday morning or by late Wednesday morning rather, uh, the weather patterns will shift and change and the snow will, will basically dissipate and move off somewhat to the north. John says this storm will have varied amounts of snow for different areas because of the direction of the flow of the moisture coming in. In the immediate Fairbanks, North Pole area, the lower elevations, we could easily see six to eight inches. In the hills, the nearby hills, we could look at seven, eight or nine inches. Um, we're looking at maybe up to a foot in the farther hills way out of town or out to the northeast of uh, like Gina Hot Springs. Normally a storm moving out brings a lot of cold weather with it. But John says this is not the rule with this particular storm. After the snow ends on Wednesday morning, we'll have somewhat cooler air move in, but only because the snow has stopped. And we'll be looking at temperatures just about normal for this time of year. Uh, highs in the zero to five above range and lows around 10 below to 15 below as we look through the rest of the week. Keep it tuned to KTVF and our website, webcenter11.com, on the progress of the storm and any pertinent information that you need to know. And as you can see on our satellite picture, it is moving up our direction. Coming in from the southwest, there's a lot of moisture with this system, and it's going to give us a pretty good dumping. Like we said, six to eight inches is not un unlikely for the Fairbanks area, and even more in the higher elevations. We'll talk more about this storm, give you some ideas of how you can be prepared for it. And speaking of being prepared, what are the schools going to do? Well, here's Stephanie with more on that. Thank you, Mike. Yes, we do need to get our shovels out, but the Fairbanks North Star Borough School District officials are also monitoring the winter storm warning. Now the superintendent will make the final decision to whether schools will be canceled or delayed around 5.45 a.m. via a mass telephone call to parents. Now until then, officials will stay in contact with first student, the bus provider, as well as the Department of Transportation and the National Weather Service. Parents can also check online or on the school's mobile app. Now remember, no news from the district in the morning means school is in session as usual. In other news, this past Friday, the Salvation Army kicked off its red kettle season for the holidays to raise money for people in need. But this year, because Santa's Clearinghouse didn't operate, they're trying to make up the difference. Monty Bowen has details. As we reported Saturday, the Salvation Army in Fairbanks may have tripled the number of people they normally help during the holidays because of the closure of Santa's Clearinghouse. And one of the major groups that took care of about 600 extra families this year is not going to be doing that. So we are one of the agencies that are attempting to pick up the slack on that. So we are having to cover pretty much triple. We're aiming at tripling on normal uh, family assistance wow. this year. Although there is always a major focus at Christmas, there is a year-round need. We have a very transitory um, population here in Fairbanks. So the need stays there. It, it, it is not necessarily going up, it's just always up. We're continually busy. There's always families moving in, always families moving out. Although there is always a major focus at Christmas, there is a year-round need. It's not just food, but with uh, 
mental assistance at times, with uh, clothing, with sometimes if they're a fire victim, we can help in other areas with household goods. There's just a lot of need in this community. Another thing they do is try to help people with heating their homes. We have some assistance with heating oil and with other forms of heating the house. We, at this point, we do not do wood. Um, there has been times in the past when we've had donations of wood that we want to help families, but that's a rarity. But really, it's the, the, we have special funds set aside to help with oil. They're limited, and once they're gone, they are gone. The red kettles are the traditional way they raise money. And that money stays in Fairbanks. You know, what is raised in the red kettles goes directly back into what we do here in this community. If you would like to help or learn more about the Salvation Army's programs, you can visit them at 1602 10th Avenue. This is Monty Bowen reporting. All right, and we are joined by Joe Cook. Well, hey there. Doing? Good. I know I'm, not, I'm not but here, up here a lot, but I'm No, here today. you're not. <laughs> it's a good, pleasant surprise. So what do you got going on in sports today? Well, as you know, it's Monday, so we have the weekend recap. Yeah. It's going to feature some Nanook sports and, of course, a brand new i5. I like so, those i5s. Yeah, I got you. So stay tuned for that right after the break. Welcome back Interior Alaska. Joe Cook back in the sports seat for you this Monday evening with the weekend recap. There were some ups and downs in UAF sports over the holiday weekend. The Nanak hockey team shut out the 19th ranked Northern Michigan Wildcats 3 to nothing in an impressive performance on Friday night. Saturday, the Nooks had their brooms on hand, but the Wildcats were determined to get out of the Carlson Center with the win. At a 7-14 mark of the first period, Northern's Jake Baker scored on a power play to give the Cats an early lead. And about a minute later, the Nanaks, though they answer with an even strength tally from Nolan Heisman his fourth of the season courtesy of Jared Linnell and Trevor Campbell. Then the Wildcats took advantage of some whistles with five minutes left in the opening period. Barrett Cabe converted the second power play for Northern. They would add another in the second and score their fourth power play goal just one minute into the third period. The refs let them play on Friday, but whistles were blown Saturday. Called the Knicks for nine penalties. Northern only had three. Northern wins four to one as the Wildcats and Nanook split the series. On Friday Friday, UAF went two for two on power plays. Northern went four for nine, scoring all of their goals with an extra man on Saturday. UAF is now seven and seven in tie for seventh in the WCHA with a two and six record. Saturday was the final day of the Mount McKinley Bank North Star Invitational Tournament. First back-to-back -back losses of the season for the UAF women after dropping their first two games in the Thanksgiving Classic. The UAF women's basketball team were aiming to get their first win of the tourney against the winless Colorado Christian Cougars. Colorado Christian, they were up 11 at the half, but in the second half, the Nanix had to rally. UAF chipped away, down by one with 11 minutes left. The Nooks went into beast mode on defense, getting three straight steals. Scored on each turnover to swing the momentum as the Nooks went up by 10. UAF forced 21 turnovers and had 25 points off of Cougar miscues. The Cougars led by Claire Paxson and Kate Lothan, who both had 16 points, brought their squad with, within three points late. But UAF made a last defensive stand and held on for a 68-66 to win. Jordan Wilson had a game-high 17 points and four steals in just 18 minutes for the Nooks on Saturday. She was named to the all-tournament team. Colorado Christians Taylor Torres, Logan O'Farrell, and Shantiva Ashley of Augustana, and Emily Wendling and Samantha Zerzo complete the North Star All-Tournament team. Saginaw Valley State went 3-0, and they are this year's North Star champions. The Nanex are now 6-2, and they will open their GNAC schedule at Seattle Pacific this Thursday. The Nanook men's basketball team went through some heartbreak on Saturday. UAF lost to Holy Names on a layup at the buzzer and a 67-68 loss. The Nooks were ahead in the last 10 minutes of the game until the final play by Josh Kroom of Holy Names. Ashton Edwards had 14 points to lead the Nooks. Adam Griffin added 11. The UAF men's squad went 1-1 one one in the Notre Dame Day Number Thanksgiving Tournament, defeating the host team on Friday. GNAC play begins for them in this Thursday as well on the road at Western Oregon. We wrap up this Monday sportscast with this week's I-5 interior top five plays. Check them out. At number five, Kelly Lowe gets five steals against Saginaw Valley State on Thanksgiving, scoring 13 points in the process despite the 66-75 loss to the Cardinals. At number four, Tyler Morley threads the needle to Marcus Bassar, who taps it in right on the doorstep in Alaska's win over Northern Michigan on Friday. At number three, more from Friday night, Davis Jones records his second shutout of the year with 18 stops against the Northern Michigan Wildcats in a 3-0 victory. 
And number two, check out the circus shot from Stephanie Toomson, which finds glass and ends up in the bottom of the net in a 66-63 victory over Colorado Christian in Saturday's North Star Invitational Finale. And number one, the shot of the night on Friday. The captain, Colton Pareko, unloads and scores on the power play in the 3-0 victory over number 19, Northern Michigan, on Friday night. To vote for the play of the week, click on your play on the i5 poll on webster11.com. You can also comment on the KTVF Facebook and YouTube posts and send a tweet to KTVF 11 Sports on Twitter for your vote. The play of the week will be revealed this Friday. The i5 Sports Report is brought to you by Adiant Orthopedic Physical Therapy. And a final note, the West Valley North Pole hockey game scheduled for Tuesday has been canceled, but that will be rescheduled at a later date. But that'll do it for sports tonight. Mike Schultz is next with a very important weather forecast, so stay with us. Hey everyone, we're back once again on a Monday night and the weather is the big news, at least when it comes to my ballpark. We'll tell you more about that in just a little bit. Our photograph for tonight is really beautiful. This one's sent in by Nancy and Mark Hummel. A nice sunrise around the UAF campus there. And as always, if you have a photograph to share, by all means, send it to photos at ktvf11.com and we'll share it with the rest of the audience. Your numbers look like this. Today's high 8 degrees, which it is right now. The low last night, 2 degrees below. Record high 37, 1992. Record low 47 below in 1990. Sunrise at 1023 this morning and the sun sets at 1059 this afternoon, which gave us about 4 hours and 36 minutes of daylight, a loss of a minute or 5 minutes from yesterday. And once again, a winter storm warning is in effect from 9 p.m. tonight until 6 a.m. Wednesday morning, 6 to 12 inches of snow possible, depending on whereabouts you are uh, in the area. And driving conditions will be very difficult, reduce visibilities, and watch out for some traction there too. So give yourself plenty of time to get to your destination. What's going on as far as our latest radar? As you can see, we are getting activity moving in toward the Fairbanks area, not too far away. So the snow is not too far away, probably in the next couple of hours or so, the way it looks right now. What else is going on across the rest of the state? Well, it is raining over Juneau and uh, also some rain around the Ketchikan area, 34 degrees there. Also some snow shower and rain shower activity around the Anchorage Bowl. And they're looking for freezing rain later on, which is not going to be fun at all. Snow shower activity over the southwest portion of the state and up in the north slope. Cloudy skies at Barrel, 7 degrees below zero there, 6 below at Fort Yukon. Lower 48 weather, things are getting wet over the Southern California area. We'll show you why in just a little bit. It is sunny over the Pacific Northwest. Clouds are on the increase there and looking at cool temperatures at Minneapolis, 6 degrees for their high temperature. That's pretty darn chilly. Elsewhere, we have uh, some rain shower activity over the uh, New York area, 64 degrees there, and sunshine down to the south with some showers around the Miami area. On the satellite and radar, everything moving from west to east uh, for the most part. Rain here and a big plume of moisture moving across Southern California, bringing them some much needed rainfall. And over the eastern half of the country, also a mix of rain and snow there too. And over Southern California, one to four inches is common over the next couple of days, and they need that in the worst way, but it is also going to bring with it slick roads, flash flooding, and mud flows below the burn scars they had earlier this year with all the, the fires going on. So kind of like uh, mixing the bad with the good. Now the overall jet stream is going to be way to the north, which allows all the warmer temperatures and pleasant conditions to return to the uh, southern half of the country over there later on this, this week, and then rain will continue over the uh, eastern and southeastern sections. All right, back to Alaska for tomorrow. Looking at uh, mostly cloudy skies for Barrow, snow or blowing snow for Nome, and heavy snow expected in the Fort Yukon area, maybe six inches there. Over the interior, heavy snow for Fairbanks, snow showers at Healy, and a chance of snow in Delta because the wind flow is not quite conducive for them getting a lot of snow. That's the way it looks right now. Over southeast Alaska, rain and snow in Juneau and periods of rain at Ketchikan, while over to the southwest part of the state, we'll be looking at strong wind and heavy rain for Cold Bay, rain and snow in Kodiak, and light rain or snow for the Bethel area. And down around the Anchorage Bowl, like I said, a freezing rain advisory in effect until 9 o'clock tomorrow morning for uh, Anchorage. Nasty, nasty weather there. Some snow is expected also with that freezing rain at both Homer and Anchorage with heavy snow in the Valdez area. Okay, it is uh, normally our time for our kids' weather. We're giving the kids a week off and giving you a weather fact. And tonight in 2011, Centerville, Utah, had winds over 100 miles an hour, destroyed more than 400 trees. Again, thanks to Mount McKinley Bank for sponsoring our kids' weather each night. And next week, we're going to be, uh, well, we're not be taking a break. We're actually going to be back with the kids, and we'll give you a chance to see some more interesting facts from those kids. 
Tonight, four degrees below zero, cloudy with snow, maybe developing about two inches possible. And tomorrow, it all comes in really heavy. Periods of heavy snow, six to eight inches and more higher up of the elevations. The extended forecast calling for the snow to be trailing off by Wednesday, then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, looking at mainly partly cloudy to cloudy skies. Temperatures, once again, where they should be this time of year, in the teens below for the overnight lows and the single digits above for the daytime highs. But got to watch out for that heavy snow. All right. Well, thank you, Mike, so much. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have run out of time. So uh, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back here at 11.